from House of Gaia Pythons. Uh, so in this week's video, I'm just gonna basically be going over um, whether or not recessives have completely taken over the market, uh, just, or just as in, in general, uh, in terms of ball pythons. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, let's jump into it. So in short, so why have they? Well, I think most of the reason uh, is, you know, they are, I mean, first off, they're visually striking. So like most recessives either are giving you extreme color or extreme pattern mutation. Um, you know, like a couple in terms of visual, like clown, puzzle, hide, uh, very visual. And then in terms of color, we have hypo, uh, desert ghost, lavender, albino, um, just to name some. But I think a lot of it too is that it's, it's building anticipation for us. So for so many years stacking these codoms and dominants, it, it, it's a little bit easier. Um, you know, there's not as much, uh, I, I don't want to say risk, but with, let's say a het pied to a het pied, the odds of you hitting a pied are a little bit harder. And then what you're left with is a non-visual normal looking animal. Um, whereas, you know, even orange dream to orange dream, if you don't hit the super orange dream, you're still getting orange dreams. So everything in that clutch is still gonna be decent. And of course you can still hit normals. Um, but I'm, what I'm getting at is that it takes a bit more work to hit that really nice visual. Uh, and I think that is one thing that has helped recessives gain that popularity. Um, you know, it's just like any other hobby in life, you know, the, the, the most rarest form of whatever you're going for, those are the things that people are gonna work towards. And I feel like recessives are that thing. Um, if any of you are into Pokemon, Pokemon, sorry. Uh, they were the shiny card, right? Like you, everyone's kind of gearing towards that. Um, so I think that that's a huge reason. So another thing I want to go over is uh, the importance of recessives. Um, and I, you know, I'm a huge fan of stacking co-dominant and dominant genes. I always have been. And because uh, when I got into it back in 2011, it was more so of that. I mean, there was still a lot of single recessive projects happening, but at that time it was getting kind of our, our very like old school genes into those recessives. And even that was huge back then. Um, but I think one of the important things uh, about recessives, especially now, is they are really helping the market um, stay afloat and not and not crash in a sense. Uh, I still think it would have it, we would have been fine either way, but I feel because like we were talking about before, how it's making projects more exciting. Um, it's giving giving us that push to work with animals for a little bit longer too. We're not just kind of dumping projects anymore because we can. We're trying to work so hard towards getting that visual. Um, and especially with double and triple recessives coming out in quads now, um, I think that's helping a lot. And it's definitely helping the market. Uh, it's nice to see that because of double and triple recessive stuff now, we're starting to see those more expensive ball pythons again. Um, I still remember when one of the, the shows I went to, I can't remember what year it was, it may have been 2014 or so, but seeing a banana pinstripe for like 20 grand. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Uh, it, you know, getting back to prices like that, it, for me, I like it. I don't care if it, I mean, some people will look at it at the angle of like, oh man, that sucks, I'm never gonna be able to afford it. You will one day. Uh, what it does mean though is that our market isn't crashing and it's, it's actually going up again, which is awesome. That's what we want. Um, being patient and waiting for that animal you really want is worth, worth that animal right now being 20 grand and we're starting to see those prices pick up again. Like, I think Desert Ghost Clowns are like 12 grand Bam! or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, don't quote me on that. But again, it's nice to see those prices getting to that point again. Uh, it only benefits us all. Um, there are plenty of nice animals still out there that you can get for under a thousand. So, um, you know, no one should be complaining. To be honest, when a lot of us got into this a long time ago, uh, you have to remember what some people were paying for a single gene pinstripe um, or, you know, a bumblebee when they were like 1500. What year is it? Or whatever, depending when you go back. Um, so anyways, to get back on topic, uh, it's keeping things new and exciting. And I think that's a huge, uh, a huge importance of why we should allow recessives to kind of take over. Um, and I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. I, I, I think that's why they're so important. They are really helping the market. Um, 
And then to go over another reason why they're important is just visually. I, it's hard to beat double visuals nowadays. Like every double visual project I look into, even if I'm not keen on one of the visuals or not, um, they still look amazing. Um, I'm really looking forward to Desert Ghost Clowns, Desert Ghost Pides. Uh, again, mixing those three together, the Desert Ghost Clown Pied, um, you know, Dreamsicles, uh, Desert Ghost um, Lavenders. I mean, it's endless basically. Um, but yeah, I, I, again, super important that we, we keep strong with the uh, recessive projects and uh, let's jump into another topic. All right guys, so now that we talked about uh, recessives and uh, whether they've taken over the market, I also just wanted to go over why codoms are still relevant and dominant. Um, I feel like we still need codoms and dominants just as much as we need recessives basically. Uh, I feel like without them, we can't really push these recessive projects as far as we have. Um, so they're still super important. And especially in uh, pattern mutation recessive stuff, we need these codoms to bring out those bright colors um, and change colors and stuff like that. Uh, and another thing with codoms and dominants that are really important, you know, a lot of us were trying to breed towards these insane animals, but we cannot forget that there are people out there that couldn't give about breeding animals and they just want a nice animal. Um, there are plenty of people still out there that just want a pet snake uh, or even just start off with a pet snake but then they get into breeding. So I think having codoms is still important because we can make some really nice animals under a thousand dollars. And of course, I mean, you know, pretty much every codom at this point is under a thousand if you're just dealing with a single gene. But in order to broaden that horizon of color and pattern, um, you know, for someone who just wants a pet snake, I still think they are very important. Um, so that they're important to get people into the hobby, uh, get people started with one snake. We know how all that goes. Uh, if you're into reptiles, usually they'll get one, two, and then 20. So I think having, you know, those pastel orange dream yellow bellies out there, uh, stuff like that, where, um, you know, someone who isn't, uh, who doesn't know genetics as well, uh, it's an easier way for them to kind of get introduced for a very cheap, uh, cheaper price. Um, so it, it kind of helps in that uh, fast facet. And then as well as it's it's helping for people who do want to start breeding, um, instead of getting into a more expensive double or triple triple recessive project, it's easier to get into uh, stacking some codoms and making some crazy stuff. So that's a good introduction for people who are getting into breeding. Um, so I think they are, they still have a place in the market, um, but I do believe that recessives have officially taken over at this point. Um, I, I will say like, I even noticed like, with males is a big one. Um, most people, mo most breeders, aren't usually gonna buy a male unless it's either visual recessive or it has het something at the end of it. Uh, I, if you go look on Morph Market, there are just a onslaught of males without het attached or a visual. Uh, so that aspect can kind of be scary at, at some point as well, in, in my opinion. Um, I just feel like because breeders are gearing more towards having visual males or at least having a het at the, at the end of it, that is why it's important to start pushing towards recessives. Um, I remember a long time ago, people were like, why, why is anyone still making normal ball pythons at this point? And I feel like that is almost starting to happen with males that don't have head clown or head pied at the end or are a visual themselves. So it's, I feel like it's something we all have to start thinking about more and more. Um, it's something that's kind of helped me change the direction of where I'm going. Um, like I said, because I'm so old school, I was I was planning on stacking a lot of codoms and stuff, and I still do, but I am kind of changing my direction and trying to make as many head animals as I can, um, just because I feel like they're gonna sell better um, and I feel like they will progress the hobby a little bit more. So just I just wanted to put that out there for codoms and dominance. I still love all three. Um, I mean, every ball python, there aren't many ball pythons out there that I don't like, so. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much for sticking around. I'm sorry about my rambling. Uh, this was a little bit longer of a video than I thought it was gonna be. Um, You'll have to excuse me, I'm kind of like scatterbrained when I'm thinking of genetics and stuff. I'm trying to get better at making videos, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, if I said anything that offended anyone, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I love all genetics. There aren't many ball pythons I don't like, but I kind of wanted to make this video because I've noticed lately, even myself, that it's like, man, recessives have just like completely taken out. Like even when I look on Morph Market, it's like 
it's a recessive man's game out there basically and and uh you know it, it's shocking coming back into this and seeing how much it's it's gone that direction and don't get me wrong i mean recessives have always been popular but like i said earlier like just seeing all these males that are available that have been there on on morph market for a long time and then you see any visual male uh, or anything with head attached same with females uh, they go quite quickly so you can you can see it yourself if you go on morph market and, and you know even if you go and look at what has sold um you know you can see the trend starting to take place so i hope i hope this video helps anyone who's you know deciding to get into breeding um you know just some pointers to, to try to uh, gauge yourself towards making uh, as many animals as you can. It'll it'll help your business out. In, in my opinion, of course, all of this is in my opinion. Um, you know, I'm not out here trying to get everyone to agree with me. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please feel free feel free to uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It means a lot to me. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.